All right. It's been a long time since I've uh, answered this question. And, you know, before I even go into answering this question, uh, you first got to ask yourself this question. Are you a man and woman of truth? And the only way truth is defined in this world, in this generation which we're living, is um, it has to be defined by the law and it has to be defined by the one who is the originator of the law and who personifies truth himself. And that is Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. Polygamy, polygyny. Hmm. If someone is a student of the Bible and knows exactly what it says, just believe what it says. It's just that simple. If, I'm going to use the, the proper Greek term for it rather than polygamy, because polygamy is a, um, I, I guess you would say, it, it, it doesn't really truly define the biblical perspective of it. Um, because it, it is uh, granting both male and female uh, constant uh, multiple partners. But the book doesn't speak like that. So the proper term is polygyny. And if you are a man and woman of truth and you believe the Bible, um, you would take what the Bible says over and above the opinion of a lot of people because people have a lot of opinions today that they try to pass off as truth. Uh, for instance, you know, we live in the United States of America, do we not? And what does the United States of America say? They say that Sunday is the Sabbath. Now, while I will venture to say what, 95% of Christian dumb uh, believes that, uh, all you got to do is go and look and see that Sunday is the first day of the week. And if it's the first day of the week, it's definitely not the seventh day of the week. Now, again, you've got to be a man and woman of truth because you've got people that are self-appointed scholars and theologians that they can easily dissect that book and that Bible and make it say something contrary to what it actually really says. You would have to understand exegesis and exegesis, all right? But they come up with all types of theories all types of philosophies, all types of ideals, all types of theologies that will disagree with what the book says. But the Bible only talks about the Sabbath. And the Sabbath, as a matter of fact, is the only day in the Bible that actually has a name that is, is identified as rest. All right. I know we're not talking about that, but I'm using this proof text. You know, if, if you believe that Sunday or the Sabbath has been changed from the first day or if you believe that the Sabbath has been changed from the seventh day to the first day, uh, you got some serious problems right here. You have mentally got problems. Um, and then you seriously don't even believe what's in front of you. You just literally don't. Um, you can let someone reason you right out of the faith. So the question is polygyny. Well, Abraham was the father of faith. How many... Um, the, the proper Hebrew term is, is how many Ashayas or women did he have? You follow me? Um, and we know where that led. He's the father of faith. And I often tell people that if Abraham was so wrong in his polygyny or having more than one woman, all right, more than one consort, when Hagar left and took her son Ishmael and kicked the traces, why did the Most High tell Abraham to go back and submit herself to her maid, her handmaid, which was Sarah or Sarai? Why? I mean, didn't the creator of the universe knew if we follow the sentiment of the United States of America today, didn't he know that um, Abraham... Had more than one woman, and yet is not defined as sin. As a matter of fact, I read the law. 
I've read the law backwards, forwards, upside down, sideways. I've read the prophets. I even read the New Testament. And none of them, the apostles, the prophets, the, uh, none of them, none of them, Moses, none of them disagree with biblical marriage or polygyny. Now, you got focus on the family. You got all these uh, European consorts and everybody else. Again, these people are experts at twisting, warping, and distorting the truth of the word. But you're going to find out today what's really truly in the heart of man. And you're going to find out that these people don't have the spirit of truth. While it's okay for them to be in serial divorce and remarriage, divorce and remarriage and divorce and remarriage, because they all tout and say, one man and one woman till death do your part. That's what they say. But, and I often preface that by saying, okay, if it's one man, one woman till death do your part, that means you get no spares then, right? You get no spares. I preface that from Dr. William Luck, who I've spoken to on quite a few occasions. You get no spares then, right? And they say, yeah, 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 you get no spares. Well, we got you now. Because if you get no spares, then um, that means if the first marriage doesn't work out, you've had your one woman, you've had your one man, and you can't get married again. But see, what happens is, is when things don't suit people today, and it doesn't fit their philosophy and their theology and ideology, they twist the scriptures, they whoop the scriptures, they do everything they can. When the scriptures no longer matter, then they default to secular man, or the laws of the government of the world today, which is that nonsensical? Do we really truly think that the Most High Yah loves America simply because we say, God bless America? No, Yah loves himself, he loves his laws, he loves his people. Then you go to Jacob. I mean, after all, we always talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. Did not Jacob have four women? Did he not? I know you many of you are probably saying, why not you saying wives? Because wives is a European term. It's, it's, it's not Hebraic. It doesn't bring the, the uh, truthfulness uh, of the subject. But Jacob, the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel, had four women. Yeah, all at once. And he, out of those four women, he produced 12 sons. Simply amazing, isn't it? We know for sure that if we read Numbers, the first chapter, Numbers, the third chapter, if you put it all together, that we know that Israel in itself um, had at least, at least one Israelite had at least, watch this, I'm going to really throw you off the subject now, 27 firstborn sons. How do you think they multiplied so much in Mizraim, what is commonly called Egypt? So we've got... Abraham, we got Moses, we got Jacob, we got Jacob. No, we haven't dealt with Moses yet. Moses had three. I know people believe two. That's because, again, they're not students of the word. Moses had three women. And, of course, they'll try to say, well, they wasn't all at the same time. Do you really truly know? I know the one thing. Abraham had two women at the same time. Jacob had four women at the same time, if not more. Matter of fact, Abraham, not only did he have... Um, uh, what we would call commonly today uh, multiple wives, but he had concubines as well. <laughs> Father of the faith. Jacob, who had his name changed to Israel. Moses, the custodian of the law. And then let's go to King David, who had, from my last count, from what I can ascertain from the word, 18 women. 18 of them. King David. And you know what? Y'all rebuked him for his adultery with Bathsheba. Bathsheba he did. But he never ever rebuked him for his polygyny. Then let's go to the New Testament. Of course, we all know about Solomon, right? And it's, it's never ever rebuked. So we go to the New Testament and then we turn around and we see if you really truly read it, really truly read it, where did those brothers of Jesus come from? Because all of them didn't come from Mary which we know to be Miriam, but the Europeans changed it to Mary. You know, they add their names to the books all the time. Um, you know, I'm using terms that you're familiar with, names you're familiar with. But where did that come from? I mean, the at least, you know, what we will call a first century historian, Josephus, he actually spoke about 
he's an historian. He, he was a trader historian too. And he actually spoke about how polygyny was a common practice amongst Hebrew Israelites. America does polygyny today too. There's nobody, especially those that are against polygyny, there's nobody in this country, in the United States of America, that is really monolygamous or monogamous. Before a woman even gets married today, I've heard some women has been with upwards of 50 and 60 men today before they even get married, so-called marriage, state marriage license. That is unreal. That's called whoredoms. That is called an old-fashioned W-H-O-R-E. That's what it's called. Uh, what about the men? It's called a whoremonger. So you mean to tell me that you people going to champion yourselves as people of morality, that you have what you call in your own mind to write the right to be able to define morals and ethics when your outlook on the scriptures is skewed. When I come back next time, we'll deal with the subject of um, one, you know, let every man have his also own. We'll deal with one and own at a later date here. But hey, you people got a lot to come to. Um, I mean, if anything, uh, more than anything, you should be upset that when you got married, you didn't marry a virgin. 